Hello friends, for opening DMAT account, please make use of the link available in description. Totally, we have prepared 10 videos in the fundamental analysis series. This is the fourth video. Watch all these 10 videos one by one so that you can easily understand the concept. Definitely, these 10 videos will help you for doing fundamental analysis. Remaining videos link are in description. In company analysis, for screening the good stocks, we are using 8 parameters. In that 8 parameters, first and second parameter we had seen in the third video. In this video, we are going to see about third and fourth parameter. Third parameter is current ratio. That is, we are going to compare current assets with current liabilities. Fourth parameter is debt to equity ratio. That is, here we are going to compare long term borrowings with total shareholders fund. First, we will see about current ratio. Current ratio is otherwise called as liquidity ratio or working capital ratio. Working capital means for running the day to day operation of the business, how much capital amount is needed. That is called as working capital. For example, purchase of raw materials, labor cost, electricity bill, like this for day to day operation, totally how much amount is spent. That is called as working capital. For example, let me take my personal life. Suppose in this year, if my total income is more than my total expenses means, then I will not face any liquidity problem in this year. Suppose my total income is 10 lakhs and my total expenses is 15 lakhs. Then in this case, definitely I will face liquidity problem. Similarly, for companies also, we can check the liquidity status. That is, in any company, totally how much amount will be received in this financial year if that amount is higher than the total expenses in this financial year. Then, that company's liquidity status is good. That is, that company will not face any money problem in this financial year. Here, current liabilities is nothing but one company's total expenses in this financial year. That is, current liabilities. Next, current assets is nothing but total amount receivable by a company in this financial year. That is current assets. Normally, for any company, current assets is to current liabilities ratio should be at least 2 is to 1 ratio or greater than that. Then only it can be considered as a positive sign for that company. We can get this current liabilities and current assets data from balance sheet. In balance sheet, two major topics are available. One is equities and liabilities, second is assets. Under the topic equities and liabilities, current liabilities data will be available. Under the topic assets, current assets data will be available. Now, I had opened balance sheet of Britannia Industries Limited. This is the balance sheet of Britannia Industries Limited. We should know meaning for some of the terms used in balance sheet. First, under the topic current liabilities, we should know about these two subtitles. That is short term borrowing and trade payables. We are not going to analyze the numericals of these subtitles, but just we should understand the meaning for these terms. That is enough. Britannia Industries Limited might have taken loan from the bank. In that loan, how much amount should be repaid in this financial year that is called as short term borrowing. In that loan, how much amount should be repaid after this financial year that is called as long term borrowing. For example, if Britannia company had taken 1000 rupees loan, in that 1000 rupees loan, let me assume that 250 rupees has to be repaid in this financial year and remaining 750 rupees has to be repaid after this financial year, like that let me assume. Here, in this example, rupees 250 will be mentioned in short term borrowing and remaining 750 rupees will be mentioned in long term borrowing which comes under the topic non-current liabilities. In the year 2020, short term borrowing of Britannia company was 480 crore rupees. Before the year 2020, short term borrowing was zero. That means in 2020 only Britannia company had taken loan. This is also a notable point. Next, we will see about trade payables. 
Britannia Industries Limited might have purchased raw materials or machineries from other companies in credit basis. Like this, for how much amount Britannia company had purchased the product in credit basis, the total amount will be mentioned in trade payables. Britannia company has to repay that amount to that companies in this financial year. In the year 2020, trade payable of Britannia company is 956 crore rupees. That means Britannia company had purchased the product in credit basis for totally 956 crore rupees. Britannia company has to repay this amount in this financial year itself. Next, we will discuss some of the terms used under the topic current assets. In that, first term is current investment. That is, if any company did short term investment which is convertible into cash within this financial year. That is called as current investment. For example, if Britannia company had deposited their money in 6 month fixed deposit or if they invest in gold or if they buy any shares, they are all short term investment. This investment is convertible into cash within this financial year. This is nothing but current investment. Next term is inventories. For example, let me assume one company. In that company, value of the sold product in one financial year will be recorded as revenue which comes under profit and loss account statement. Next, in that financial year, how much product were unsold? That will be recorded as inventories. Addition to this, in that company, how much raw materials are available? That also will be recorded as inventories only. In simple, the total value of the unsold finished product and raw materials will be recorded as inventories. We can take Britannia company. In Britannia company, biscuits and cakes which are ready for sales will come under inventories and also raw materials like maida, sugar, all these raw materials also will come under inventories only. Why the inventories are recorded under current assets we will see now. In Britannia company, in the previous financial year end, some of the biscuits and cakes are not sold means that will be sold at the beginning of this financial year. By selling that, Britannia company will receive the cash in this financial year. Next, Britannia company can convert raw materials into biscuits and cakes and that can also be sold in this financial year itself. By selling this also, Britannia company will receive the cash in this financial year. So that only this inventories was coming under current assets. Next term is trade receivables. If any company sells the product to the customers in credit basis, then that will be recorded as trade receivables. In simple, trade receivable is the cash which is receivable from the customers. If any company's trade receivable is increasing year by year, then that is not a positive sign for that company. Next term is cash and cash equivalent. In any company, how much hard cash is available plus bank balance plus other financial product which is readily convertible into cash. All these are considered as cash and cash equivalent. If any company have more cash and cash equivalent, then that is a positive point for that company. In balance sheet, under the topic current liabilities, at the last you can find total current liabilities value. Total current liabilities of Britannia industry is 2,215 crore rupees. That is, in this financial year, Britannia Industries Limited has to spend 2,215 crore rupees. Next, under the topic current assets, at the last you can find total current assets value. Total current assets of Britannia industry is 3,205 crore rupees. That is, in this financial year, Britannia Industries Limited will receive 3,205 crore rupees. Already I had told that current assets is to current liabilities ratio should be at least 2 is to 1 ratio. But in Britannia Industries Limited, current ratio is little less than 2 is to 1 ratio. I can tell in Britannia, current ratio is around 3 is to 2 ratio. In this situation, you can check the other parameters of Britannia. If other parameters are positive, then this parameter is acceptable. Next, I had opened balance sheet of DMART. DMART is the brand name of Avenue Supermart. 
we will see the liquidity status of dmark now in the year 2020 total current asset value of dmark is 2292 crore rupees that is in this year dmark will receive 2292 crore rupees next in the year 2020 total current liabilities value of dmart is 722 crore rupees that is in this year dmart has to spend 722 crore rupees almost dmart current ratio is 3 is to 1 ratio so that the current ratio for dmart is higher than 2 is to 1 ratio this shows that dmart liquidity status is good so this is a positive sign for that company Next, I had opened balance sheet of Vodafone Idea. In the year 2020, total current liabilities value of Vodafone Idea is 95,096 crore rupees. That is, in this year, Vodafone Idea has to spend 95,096 crore rupees. Next, in the year 2020, total current assets value of Vodafone Idea is 21,822 crore rupees. That is, in this year, Vodafone Idea will receive 21,822 crore rupees. Here, in Vodafone Idea, current liabilities value is much higher than the current assets value. This shows that Vodafone Idea is struggling for day-to-day -day operation itself. So, to overcome this, additionally they will take loan. So, this parameter is a negative sign for that company. Next, we are going to see the fourth parameter. Fourth parameter is debt to equity ratio. In debt to equity ratio, we are going to compare long term borrowings with total shareholders fund. In any company, if you want to check the financial status in current year, then you can use the previous parameter. That is current assets is to current liabilities. From that parameter, you can check the financial status of any company at the present year. Suppose in any company, if you want to check the financial status for future, then you can use the fourth parameter that is long term borrowings is to total shareholders fund. From this parameter, you can check the financial status of any company for long term. Normally for starting any business, promoter will use two types of fund. First is own fund. That is, how much amount is available with the promoter, he will invest that amount in his business. That is called as own fund. Suppose, for the promoter, if additional fund is needed means, then he will take loan from the bank. That is a second type, loan fund. If any company is listed in share market, then all the shareholders of that company will come under owner category. So, here own fund is considered as total shareholders fund. Total shareholders fund denotes how much worth of asset belongs to owners of that company. That is total shareholders fund. Next, loan fund is considered as long term borrowing. Long term borrowing denotes how much loan amount a company has to settle in the future. That is long term borrowing. Normally, in any company in the starting stage, if long term borrowing is greater than total shareholders fund means, that is not a big problem. But after 10 or 15 years or 20 years later, if long term borrowing is higher than total shareholders fund means, then that is a big negative sign for that company. This type of companies in future, they may go for bankruptcy also. In this parameter debt to equity ratio, if any company's long term borrowing is lower than total shareholders fund, then this parameter is considered as positive sign. In simple if I want to tell means, if total loan amount is lower than owner's asset value, then that is considered as positive sign. Now I had opened Vodafone Ideas balance sheet. In balance sheet, under the topic total shareholders fund, at last they will mention the value of total shareholders fund. In March 2020, Vodafone Ideas total shareholders fund is 9000 crore rupees. That is, owner's asset value is 9000 crore rupees. In balance sheet, below total shareholders fund, there will be a topic non-current liabilities. Under the topic non-current liabilities, first term is long term borrowing. Vodafone Ideas long term borrowing is 96,280 crore rupees. 
that is in future vodafone idea has to repay the loan amount of 96280 crore rupees in vodafone idea long term borrowing is much higher than total shareholders fund that is owners asset value is much less than the loan amount so this is a big negative sign for that company next i had opened balance sheet of tcs in the year 2020 tcs total shareholders fund is 74368 crore rupees but long term borrowing is zero so tcs is a debt free company this is a big positive sign for that company next i had opened balance sheet of indigo in the year 2020 total shareholders fund of indigo is 5856 crore rupees next long term borrowing is 346 crore rupees so in indigo total shareholders fund is much higher than the long term borrowing so it is a positive sign for that company in our channel we have prepared totally eight videos in the concept of basics of stock market please watch those videos for understanding the basic terms in share market all those videos link are in description in this video if you have any doubt please make a comment i will reply